I'd like to show you a simple way to take a two-dimensional image and give it a little bit more of a three-dimensional feel. So as always, I'm going to duplicate my original layer. And for this image, I'm just going to extend my canvas top and bottom because the guitar is really close to the top and I want to get my frame underneath the, the armpit. Basically, we're going to set up four layers for this kind of effect. A black and white layer, be solid fill, which I'm going to place them under the original layer. Those are strictly for the purpose of just masking off. They're not won't be part of the finished image and I'm gonna make a frame layer I gave it a little bit less than white color just for the purpose of uh, masking it off on the white background I want to be able to distinguish the difference of the two I'm gonna make a selection on here of something that I think looks like a Polaroid snapshot the old-school Polaroid cameras and I'm just working on a mask on my solid color layer. I could have done this on a blank layer. It doesn't have to be solid color adjustment layer. But I get that look in the size that I want. And I kind of go with the perspective of the, the guitar in this point. I'm going to pick a little bit of a darker color on a new layer. And just duplicating the frame, I'm going to pull that in a little bit. I just want to add a element of dimension on the inside of that edge just to give it a little bit more of a 3D kind of a feel. Combine those two together and this is my setup now. I have four layers black, white, original and frame. And working on my original layer now I'm going to mask that and just go all the way around and fill the outside of that with black just to eliminate all the original background. And I'm going to go to my frame layer now. I'm going to drop the opacity down so I can see the original layer behind it. Put a mask on here and with a nice hard edge brush. I'm just going to brush out where the frame overlays the original layer. So it looks like the frame is going behind the arm in this case. I'm just kind of hurrying through here. This is not for production at all. This is just to demonstrate these techniques. I'll click on my mask, get the couple spots that I missed. That looks good. I'm going to go back to my original layer now, grabbing a nice hard edge brush. I'm going to finish brushing out the rest of the background. I'm just going to hurry through here, so just kind of bear with me. I'm going to grab the magnetic Tool, lasso tool because that does a pretty good job of grabbing the edge. Do this in sections. This is just to demonstrate a couple different techniques you can use to mask mask off the um, original layer. Fill that with black. I'm just going to grab a brush and touch up a couple of these edges. Clean that up a little bit. Again, I'm not spending too much time on here. Get this one little spot right here. So after you get this all masked off, you're going to want to add some shadow to here, um, which you can't do on the black layer. So we're going to look at it on the white. And I'm going to place a, a new layer on top of my frame layer. Just a blank layer. I'm going to call this the frame shadow. So if we were to look at this Polaroid snapshot, maybe on a um, leaning up against a white surface, there would be a shadow behind it. And I've got my selection. I'm just going to fill that with some black and place that behind my snapshot. Actually, I'm going to pull that down behind my original. Now I want to put a little bit of a blur on this edge, but I, I don't want to blur it too much because see how it pops up top and bottom that doesn't really look that real. Keep my blur down. That looks good. Drop the opacity of that. And that's nice soft shadow there. That looks kind of realistic. Um, you can't really see it on the black. But you can add whatever background you want later. 
and actually I'm going to put a um, I'm going to put a different color background on here. So I think I will select this red. Actually, I'm going to select a sample of this yellow right here, and I'll I'll give it a um, a counterbalance of this yellow. So I'll pull up a sample of that. Go to the opposite side of the color wheel. Pick the blue and pick some shade of blue that is not not too dark and just make a new solid fill there and fill it with that color that I selected. You can do whatever color you want but I just did this because I like the I like the opposite sides of the color wheel and I'm gonna want to add some shadow on top of here so I'm gonna select the same blue a little bit darker for my shadow I don't want to use black for my shadow I, I like using a darker version of color for that and like I said I'm just hurrying through here so please don't critique exactly how the shadows are falling and it's just for demonstration purposes I'm just gonna do a shadow for the guitar and the elbow I'm gonna give that a blur the same blur that I did for the uh, paper actually that's let me undo that and give it a, more of a blur because the elbows further off of the background than the paper is so I want to increase the blur on that give it more dissipation and that looks pretty good nice and high click OK I'm going to drop the opacity of that just like I did on the uh, frame shadow and that looks pretty good there so all these all these shadow layers are adding a little more dimension to your to, to the photo and obviously it's going to be a little bit different the one that you're working on but I'm going to put a, just another blank layer on top of my on top of my paper on top of my frame layer using the same blue that I use for the shadow in the background uh, this will be for the shadow of the arm coming out get that the same blur that I used on the background and drop the opacity of that down and that's that's basically about it. Going back to my solid fill background layer, if I I can change the color of that. Obviously, if I go with a different color, the blue shadow that I use isn't going to work. So, um, hopefully, you kind of get the idea of of how to do this technique. And um, that's basically about it for this walkthrough. So, thanks for watching, and good luck.